recording for this uh, webinar series, the first webinar in the makeover series of Skills Commons is launching. And today our presenter is going to be Monarch Media. You'll be learning much more about them uh, here in the next hour. Uh, my name is Rick Lemadu, for those of you that don't know me. Uh, I know most of you folks are from TACT and that have signed up. I know we have a few others outside of the TACT grant pro project. So I want to welcome you as well. I'm the Senior Program Manager for Skills Commons, and so I'll be moderating uh, this presentation today. And so um, as we get started, just wanted to um, make you guys aware that Skills Commons will be here after the TAC grant ends. And we're partnering with, TAC com with tech companies to help improve the current content through this makeover strategy that we have. And we're going to show you some of that today and some of the fruits of that. Um, but we will be here after the grant. We're committed to be here um, to help to support you during your grant and beyond. So um, if you use any support services, I'm sure we've had a lot of uh, uh, connections back and forth. And so we um, continue to provide support um, to tech grant projects that have completed as well. And so um, we uh, want to continue to do that and to continue to see the the repository being reused and um, the content being um, made over so that it can uh, become better and uh, he, he, he uh, updated and being reused. Uh, we, we really don't want this great investment that the Department of Labor put into workforce development to become just archived and um, not being reused. So what are the benefits of makeovers? Well, first it reduced production, reduces production time and financial costs. Um, anyone engaged in workforce development can save time, money, and effort by reusing the existing OER and skills commons. And our makeovers, they'll add value to the OER material by taking the TAC content, and you'll see one of these today before, um, from the skills commons repository and producing something after. And so we'll, we'll showcase that as well, Monarch will, Monarch Media. And um, reusing OER developed by TAC grantees and others is one of the major goals of skills commons I've mentioned here already, just wanting to make, keep this uh, content alive and fresh. And so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a new screen share and we're going to go into the um, skills commons repository and we'll um, do the rest of this uh, introductory presentation through the, um, through the screen. Share. So you all can see this. Uh, okay. Um, as we get started, I just wanted to also mention that um, we will um, have a chat window is open and available. So if you have questions as the presentation is going on, um, a few of us will be monitoring that and can answer those questions. And if there's something that might be of interest to the whole group, we'll go ahead and um, ask the uh, presenters that question as they transition um, from slides. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, as we go into Skills Commons and where will we first start to find makeovers, um, you can got, either go here on the home page or above here on our menu. And so either one works just fine. And so we want to look at the showcases, the makeover showcases in Skills Commons. Um, and uh, so we would click this button right here. Okay. And so here we kind of talk about what makeovers are and different types of makeovers. Um, we have two types of makeovers that uh, we have been involved with with technology companies and grantees. Uh, the one you'll see today is a content makeover. Um, and then we also uh, will see a, um, a packaging and delivery um, makeover. All right. Which is really about. Talk about those as we go through. And um, content maver, uh, makeovers can be implemented to improve the material by making the material maybe more accessible in other forms of material, just to name a few. So I um, invite you to look at those uh, makeovers and, and kind of get some ideas on things that you might consider um, using and reusing the material out of Skills Commons. And um, as um, I go through this presentation pretty quickly here um, as a way of introduction, um, I do want you to know that the slide deck that I have here um, does have the links to each of the pages that we're looking at. All right, so um, you'll have the URL link right on the page um, to uh, view um, if you want to go to the uh, 
page right on. <coughs> At this point, I'm going to go back to the screen share, I mean to the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And um, we just looked at the showcases. So there's a makeover showcase page, the two different types, um, as we talked about content in package and delivery makeovers, um, makeover showcases, the different types. And I want to also draw your attention that we have a connect center that we build into skills commons to help with creating a sustainable and customizable infrastructure to enable tech grantees to go beyond your individual grant. So we have this the connect center with all of its services and we'll take a quick tour of that uh, to help you be able to navigate and where you can find um, information about um, particular things that may be of interest to you to help you with sustaining your grant. Then we also have the Merlot and online learning consortium conferences um, called Innovate and um, we are doing those annually um, and organize regional conferences for, for folks. So um, at this point, I'm going to go back and show you the, um, the website uh, here at, on um, Skills Commons. And we're gonna scroll to the top of the page and I'm going to go to the Connect Center, All right? So in the Connect Center, um, if you just scroll down, you'll find the Connect with Technology Partners page, okay? And um, we've kind of vetted the technology partners for folks to become a technology partner um, with Skills Commons. Um, the company has to submit a proposal and evidence that their services enable a tech grantee to meet the SGA requirements for accessibility, UDL, universal design for learning, interoperability, quality assurance, innovations, improvement learning, and learning, and acceleration in development of workforce development skills. So. Um, so that's all part of the interview and vetting process before a technology partner becomes a um, Skills Commons technology partner. All right. And so if you're a tech grantee looking for to connect with the technology companies, um, here is where you might look um, and get some ideas of what are the benefits of working with a technology company. Um, and they can help you make the content better. They're experts at it in instructional design. This is what they do. Um, they do a really great job. They can make it more interoperable and readily adoptable for you. They can also make the content more readily accessible for example, for 508 compliancy or UDL, Universal Design for Learning. And also help enable users to use and or create uh, free and open educational resources, okay? And they can also showcase how the makeover could be more sustainable. So um, lots of great benefits there to that. Okay. Um, and then um, just as you scroll down, you can look at the different technology companies that are participating in our makeovers. And um, we'll be having a follow-up webinars by different um, technology companies in the different areas that they worked with, whether it was a content or a packaging and delivery type of a makeover. Um, so Monarch Media is right here and they will be doing a presentation about the type of makeover that they did. And so, um, which I believe is more of a content makeover, but um, we'll see. And um, so developing an interactive self-paced lesson will be the title um, of, of what they did, okay? And so we'll look at that in, in a bit. Um, the one last place I wanna show you on the Connect Center to find out about the conferences and things like that is to connect at the connect at uh, conferences and events page, all right? And just uh, scroll down here, uh, you'll see the different conferences that we'll be at. And then this one here will be the um, one that we will run for um, the uh, Skills Commons annual um, TACT uh, conference that we've been doing. And so um, that'll be April 18th to the 20th in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. So um, we invite you to, to come to that. Um, we'll be able to, at that time, um, just as we have in the past, help facilitate and broker relationships between tech grantees and non-grantees. Non we'll also be able to um, help folks with um, any getting connected to a community, for example, if that's something that they would like. To, to be involved with. So we have lots of opportunities for you to connect with other uh, grantees as well as non tech grantees and, um, and technology companies. All right.
So we go back to the um, screen share real quick uh, to the PowerPoint. And just uh, bear with me as I skip down to the last uh, slide. And if you have any questions um, about makeovers and um, what type of uh, or looking for content that you might want to reuse and make over, I put my um, email addresses here, um, my personal email, and then the one at Skills Commons comes to me, the support at skillscommons.org. So either one will work. And again, you can find um, these on our website as well. All right. And at this time, I um, wanted to let you know that we're going to turn it over to um, Monarch Media to do their presentation around the, um, the makeover that they, they um, created uh, for uh, uh, some material that was in, uploaded in Massachusetts. And so I'm going to introduce uh, Claire um, and Claire Sch Scherenberger, if I pronounce your name right. I'm, um, I'll turn it over to you at this point and allow you to do your introduction and um, and and uh, the rest of your team. So thanks, Claire, and turn it over to you now. Hey, thanks, Rick. This is actually Greg and Claire. So uh, we'll do our introductions uh, real quick. We uh, first off appreciate the opportunity to introduce introduce Monarch and present our makeover to everybody. Um, I'm Greg Flesher, the CEO of Monarch Media. I've worked in the e-learning and e-education space for more than 25 years, many of them in the publishing world where I led an online development department for a health sciences uh, company focused uh, in publishing, a company called Elsevier. And my background is in product management, platform management, and kind of general management of online projects, and in, including e-learning. I'll let Claire introduce herself. Yeah, hi everybody, this is Claire. Last name is Schneeberger which is definitely a mouthful. Um, and yeah, just really pleased to be with you here today. Um, I'm the founder of Monarch Media, and our firm is a consulting and solutions company, and we are involved in instructional design, content authoring, as well as some of the technology side. And um, I'll hand it over to Greg. He's going to give us a, a introduction just so you have a little bit more background about us and then when he's done I'll uh, do a walkthrough of the makeover and kind of show you a little bit about the process of how we did that. Great sounds good yeah we'll take a few minutes to give you guys a little bit of a background on us and uh, first off uh, we kind of went through our mission statement pretty fast on the slide you can go to our website and, and see it but uh, fundamentally Monarch feels really very strongly about making a difference improving people's lives and helping them drive both personal and organizational effectiveness. And for more than 20 years, Monarch's been collaborating with organizations across uh, education, government, healthcare, and nonprofit segments, and, and many others, to deliver some customized digital solutions that include e-learning and, and training, sometimes skills training in the corporate space. Uh, we're based in Santa Cruz, California. But we do work with a worldwide set of customers, uh, many of which you can see reflected here on this slide. Uh, di many diverse organizations, such as Arizona State University, the Boston Public Health Commission, and the state of Wisconsin's Department of Workforce Development, just to name a few of those. Mm, we also recently acquired GroupMind, a uh, collective intelligence tool set that enables organizations to be more effective in their leadership development, alignment of goals, and decision making. Um, you guys have probably participated in brainstorming sessions using post-it notes stuck on the wall, coming up with ideas. Well, GroupMind brings that process online, supporting both in-person and virtual teams, um, and we're excited to kind of uh, align that with some of the e-learning projects that we've been working on. Uh, we're a certified small business, green business, and we're also on the government GSA schedule. Next slide. Uh, so many of you certainly have ongoing digital and e-learning projects, and we're looking forward to connecting with you in the coming weeks and learning a lot more about them. Uh, over the years, uh, Monarch succeeded with an approach that generally focuses on listening. We often bridge the gap between the, the very technical people and the non-technical stakeholders on a project, and we're very well known for being able to kind of gently ease you into an e-learning project. Uh, so in other words, uh, we kind of like holding your hand and we do really well with the soft skill sides of any project and many companies like us for that reason. Uh, we also drive innovation and have a lot of accumulated uh, years of experience on our team 
working across many different market segments. Uh, we work to collaborate with you to help you guys clarify your goals, bring new ways of thinking about it, the requirements um, and their focus, and ultimately execute on time and within budget the usual things that uh, companies like to say, but we really have to focus on that as a small organization. Uh, we work on many grant-based projects against tight deadlines, and we have the ability to scale up and down our resources as needed. Uh, we have a broad network of uh, people even beyond Monarch that we connect with, depending on the project type. Uh, Technology-wise, we often advise on how to use applications, the types of applications to use, particularly all types of learning management systems across both the academic and the corporate spaces. Uh, as mentioned, our 20 years of experience uh, is quite a lot in the e-learning space, particularly in today's society where there's lots of mergers and acquisitions and companies going out of business. So we've seen a lot over the years. We've seen the emergence of online tools to facilitate learning and training, and we've used most of them over the years. Uh, as such, uh, we have numerous services, uh, depending on your project needs, including strategy consulting, curriculum development. Uh, we produce uh, a lot of learning content and implement uh, many LMS systems, as I mentioned. We do website development. It's usually in coordination with content and platform development or an LMS, uh, some mobile app development, and we do quite a bit of production of assessments, quizzes, other learning types of content across the board. And here are a few kind of random screenshots from many different types of learning applications we've helped develop over the years. As you can see, they have an extreme variance in their design, and many of those are driven entirely by you know, customer requirements on your projects. Uh, you can find a lot more of those details on our project portfolio. There's many case studies up on our website, and we'll provide that link at the end so you'll have that uh, to move forward with. And uh, with that, I'll now pass the, the discussion over to Claire, who's going to take you through the actual real exciting part of this hour, um, a walkthrough of the makeover that uh, we've, we've done for Skills Commons. Yeah, thanks, Greg. We really are excited about the Skills Commons repository and the work that all of you have been doing to, uh, you know, through your grant work to develop materials. And our purpose here is to just show what's possible for the OER resources as we think about online learning. So as Greg said, we work with a lot of different kinds of organizations. He mentioned Wisconsin Workforce Development, um, State of Iowa as well. And we see a lot of places where the content from Skills Commons uh, can be applied. Um, and that really spans a good range from meeting the needs of traditional students as well as non-traditional students and then moving into uh, professional development, workforce training, um, on-the-job training, uh, micro-learning, and also continuing education credits. Um, there's just a really great uh, breadth of applications for the work that you're doing. And we see that applying both in a you know, traditional distance learning situation, but also something we see a lot is blended learning where people are, are still in the classroom but have supplementary and supporting materials online. Um, so the, the makeover that I'm going to share with you today is pulled straight out of content from Skills Commons. A few of the things um, that we uh, focused on, you'll see highlighted on this slide, making sure that it's focused on real-world application, that it's self-directed and hands-on for the users, and that there's great remediation and support. So I'm gonna jump from here, leave PowerPoint for a second, um, and just go to Skills Commons itself, and talk a little bit about our process. We really pulled from the repository very directly. Um, oh gosh. I'm at an A in there. Or maybe if I spell it. Right. There you go. We'll get some results. So the particular resource that we used for our makeover was this um, lesson on quality care through numeracy. And you'll see that it was developed by the Massachusetts Bay Community College, and it addresses uh, kind of a range of subjects, math, healthcare, um, developmental education, and, and it's specifically for nursing assistants. So we downloaded that material, and you can see here on the screen 
the lesson plan that was developed. And I really do want to give a shout out to the Massachusetts Community College faculty and the folks at EdTech Leaders Online who authored this original content. Um, it's very well structured. You'll see that we have common core standards identified as well as adult basic education standards. And that they've already developed this lesson with a scenario in mind. So we've got a narrative description of the use case and where this would be used by nursing assistants. And then they've provided quite a set of core instructional content that includes in information, but as well as worked examples of real problems. And so we had a bunch of worked examples here. And you know, this was designed to be used um, you know, in the classroom. Here you'll see there's some sample learning activities for somebody, you know, an instructor might do this with their class and watch a video um, and just have a discussion in the classroom. And so we had great materials as we were thinking about how to adapt this um, into an online self-paced setting, what would be possible. So just to finish off, you see they've got test items provided, um, some sample projects and additional resources. So that was our starting point. And from there, we developed what I'm, I'm calling a self-paced interactive lesson. And the idea of this is that it's something that a student can work through independently. And so we wanted it to really be relevant to what they're doing in the workplace, have it really focused on workplace training. And so just to walk you through and give you the, kind of the, the whole picture of this, you'll see the course here starts with an introduction, um, talking about kind of the, the big reason, why should I care about math if I'm a nursing assistant? And this talks about the kinds of things that a nursing assistant would do. We have a video of somebody um, already in the job, talking about the job and what it's like to be a nurse assistant. So really enabling the student to put themselves in the shoes of uh, somebody in the real world and how that might apply. Um, the next thing, and this was something that we added that was not part of the original content. So we actually stepped backwards and thought, well, what information would a student need to learn or know in order to be successful? You know, what do they have to know before they could complete this lesson? And so this is about understanding how to do uh, common conversions and do the basic math related to um, unit conversions. And so we started by giving a little bit of a refresher for somebody so that they could make sure that they were up to speed on the basic information that they might need to know and to give them an opportunity to practice and validate. Um, let's see, inches to centimeters. I'm, oh, nope, I'm multiplying. There we go. Uh, to, so the point, as you can see here, and I'm failing because I can't talk and think at the same time, um, is to give the students an opportunity to gain confidence and just re remediate, what do I already know? From there, we've organized the materials from the original lesson into groups. So that, that again, we're really trying to um, organize this based on real applications and something that a student would actually do. And so we had from the original material really clear examples of use cases of applying math for time management, uh, medicine management, taking vital signs, and weighing patients. So students in this scenario can jump around. They can go to any of these that they're interested in. Um, 
we added some photos. You'll see, again, just to make this visually interesting um, and, and try to bring this content alive for folks. And then in each of these practice areas now, students have the opportunity to really apply information. So in this, you'll see I, there was an activity in the original content of watching a video. And so that video is here for students to view and able to sort of assess, well, how long would it take? They can actually measure through the timeline, how long does it take to do a particular task and start to estimate. Which is a really valuable skill for a nurse assistant is just time management. Uh, the other Claire? aspect that we yeah have a question. question yeah question um what program did you use to develop this this um sure yeah the we used a rise which is a rapid authoring tool uh, from articulate um, we then took that export and did some additional custom coding um, that especially to make sure all the 508 standards are met and that it was fully compliant in that way. Um, there's also a blend. This actual activity here is also um, not purely done in RISE, but is a separate custom interaction that integrates. Um, you know, you can see that part of the approach that we think through very carefully when we're thinking about a student who's working independently um, on their own is that they have enough support if they get stuck that they're not just lost and so there's help along the way throughout the exercises um, so that they can break it down into each step and make sure the student's going to be successful um, so you know now i can take my math and four minutes into an hour uh oh, I didn't get it right. You gotta go between rooms. Oh, right. Let me read my question. It takes another two minutes, so six divided by 60 gets me. And again, we're really reinforcing along the way the process and, and breaking out the steps for students so that they get a sort of full level of support. So you'll you kind of hopefully get the idea that for each section, we have a series of questions where people, uh, you know, students are applying actual cases that they might have on the job and, and applying the math skills to that. Um, so I guess from a, just a couple of other things I would mention here, as we thought about what's the process of moving from an original Word document into something that's interactive and, and is going to be successful online, one thing that we focused on, just thinking about our audience, was again creating real world examples, making sure these are things that people uh, are relevant to their situations, giving them the opportunity to practice what they're learning so they're not just reading something out of a textbook, but they're actually getting the opportunity to try it out themselves and get feedback and, and build their skills that way. The other thing that's important for us is thinking about usability and just making sure that technology is successful. Um, we know that one of the things that adult learners especially like is to have some ability to be self-directed. You know, we want it to be exploratory and something that's open-ended that they can um, be empowered as opposed to forced through something. Um, so, so giving them kind of the reins in terms of how they approach it. But from a technology standpoint, still including tracking and information that helps them know kind of where they are within the lesson. This design is definitely responsive. So on a you know mobile phone, this would still work um, for students who are not in front of a computer, as many of them aren't all the time. And then I also mentioned the, the 508 accessibility being an important thing when we're thinking about technology. 
Um, hey, Claire, another question, if that's okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, do you work with subject matter experts to develop these types of courses from scratch? We do, yeah. we do work with subject matter experts in a, in a really wide range of topics. We have some that are in-house and we have some that we, we partner with um, depending on the project. Yeah. Great, thank you. You know, in this case, I think it's a great advantage of the Skills Commons repository that there are, you know, all of these resources that we're able to tap into the faculty from the Massachusetts Community College and, and leverage their expertise um, and bring it, you know, to the, the sort of next format for delivery. Yeah, and the great thing about the material in Skills Commons is that all of it had to have, you know, the original material had to go through a subject matter expert evaluation. So there's that confidence that the original has, has been, you know, vetted by a subject matter expert. And then as you work to tweak it and make it, you know, um, more interactive and, and things like that, just again to run it through that filter of a subject matter expert really, you know, makes that content bonafide, you know, just really vets it and makes it good, good content. Absolutely, have. there's huge value there. And that pretty much covers the, the idea of uh, the concept of what we did. I'm really happy to open this up for other questions. Yeah, if you want to jump back to the PowerPoint too, you can uh, see a slide with our contact information and information more on the makeover. So if you want to walk through this yourself, just to get an idea, the actual content that Claire showed can be found up at our website slash Skills Commons. And of course, you can find it on the Skills Commons site directly as well. Um, so there's multiple places. You can kind of pace yourself, test yourself. Um, it's interesting. It'll take you a little bit of time to work through all of those exercises. So we took a little bit of that flat content in the Word document and, and obviously made it interactive and, and engaging. And uh, you can certainly spend uh, a couple hours probably working through it. And, also learn that you don't know as much about simple math as you thought you did. So. <laughs> He's just trying to make me feel better for making a mistake. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes going through. <laughs> sure. So, From question, there. yeah, question for you guys. Um, so, for the this this type of makeover that you folks just did, this before and after for um, that content, what what does something like that cost? You know, to to make over for for an institution. Yeah, it, it varies a little bit, but obviously there's a little bit of time from the instructional design perspective, the production perspective. That, that kind of a good estimate for this sort of range of uh, material would be in the five to eight, five to seven or eight thousand dollar range, probably low end to high end, depending on how much you want to take it with with the interactive elements and uh, um, you, you know basically how much raw content you start with, but. That's, that's typically where we look at for uh, when we think about seats and, and, and seat time for a particular person. If it takes somebody 30 minutes to an hour to kind of work through that course material, you're going to kind of look at low end to high end range in the, in the you know, four or five thousand to seven, eight thousand, somewhere in there. Great. The, the thing that I would, oh, uh -huh. just the one thing I would add to that is that um, you do see some economies of scale. We've done projects where um, we've developed full curriculum, you know, 300 lessons. Um, and in those situations where you're able to sort of develop some standards and, and work with those, um, we have, you know, been able to do, do you know, econ apply economy of a scale to that. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of these grant projects certainly are time driven. You have a short time frame to either spend money or to get something done by a deadline or, or to validate that. And oftentimes people approach us with a very tight window to, to actually produce something, whether that's even a month or, or two months. Uh, this particular amount of content, we did it over the holiday season. So that was a little bit of a uh, kind of a time, timing thing there, but uh, it, it only took a couple of weeks to kind of sort through it all and then draft the scripts and prepare, prepare the interactivity and actually get it produced. So this amount of content can be done very quickly. Yeah, that's great to know. I was going to ask that myself. So thanks, Greg, for asking, uh, answering that. That's a really good information there. Um, any, anybody else have a question?
Okay. Uh, what would be the process you go through to start this process with a client? So how do you, how would you guys go about um, getting this, this uh, initial uh, process started? Be the client yeah. first or go ahead. You know, we actually, we have a great um, toolkit that's available on our website. I can share that out, but um, if you go to our, our website toolkit that, uh, that will give you a glimpse into that process. Essentially, we start with each customer and think about, you know, for each project, who's the audience, how is it going to be used. So really understanding the context of the learning is really critical. And then from there, the process from an instructional design standpoint involves really analyzing what is the content, the starting point in this case, um, had a lot of great source material, and we were looking at you know, how to further bring um, some organization and, and structure to, to bring it to life in the online setting. And really, you know, how to bridge from a classroom set of materials into something that would, could be worked independently online. Um, hopefully that gives you some idea around our process. Any other questions? I can't believe we're so efficient to knock it out in 37 minutes, right? <laughs> well, definitely, I would just want to add how much I appreciate all of the grantees and the work they're doing. The repository, you know, from somebody who's worked with uh, corporations on workforce training and also in higher ed settings, um, just the value of what that repository uh, represents is is really something, and just very appreciative of everybody who's been involved. Just a, a follow up question to the previous one: Has your team worked with uh, credential programs, or how would you recommend building this into a, a program? So I think kind of your scale, maybe with your scale yeah. process. So go ahead, Claire. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We've worked with organizations who are trying to develop materials for continuing education credits. For example, uh, dietitians. Um, we worked on a series of materials on based on motivational interviewing, as a job skill, and creating uh, continuing education credits for people working in that field. Um, we've also worked within higher ed and have expertise in those sort of traditional um, settings for developing, you know, program-wide out learning outcomes and, and developing courses to meet a full curriculum. Um, so yeah, that, that does become kind of another level when you think about taking and tying all of these together into a, a cohesive program. All right, thank you. Um, I think we're about ready to wrap it up at this point. So um, thank you, um, Greg and, um, oh boy, I just lost your name. I'm Claire, don't Claire. worry. I'm so sorry. It's the long <laughs> last name that gets stuck in your yep. head. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for this presentation and um, uh, thank you for also providing your contact information there as well on the slides. Um, and again, everyone, um, you can get their information from the um, uh, Skills Commons Connect Center on the um, uh, technology partners page. And so um, it, again, if you have questions, you can contact me at support at skillscommons.org and I'll get you in touch with Monarch if you've got a question for them. Um, if it's something around uh, looking for content to do a makeover, please let me know and we'll help you and um, try to point you in the right direction and get you guys uh, situated there. So um, again, thank you all for attending today and again, a great uh, job there by Monarch Media and just uh, really um, great to see what you did there. Um, making over that content. And so um, 
we'll put this recording um, up on our site and um, we'll be sending out probably uh, uh, an email blast to everyone who attended as well um, and also um, use it through social media. We'll be posting um, updates as well. So thank you all again and I hope you have a great uh, rest of the afternoon and a great rest of the week. Thanks again. Thanks, Rick.